Howdy, howdy, everybody. Howdy, humans. Hope you're all having a good day today. Ugh, I have been okay. I have been very physically tired today. This might be a bit of a shorter stream. We're going to see how I feel throughout it. Like, this, like ugh, this is just on top of the fact that I'm sick right now. And this is a very dialogue heavy game. Um, I'm not exactly sure what, what we're going to see happen today, but. I'm gonna try my best. <clears throat> there we go. I was trying to mute the mic so uh, y'all didn't have to hear me cough and then turns out it muted itself like that. Wait, shit, it might be broken on the other screen actually. Let's just go ahead and jump over. My day's been on the bed full, don't worry. Y'all ain't missing anything. Aha, I was right. I was right, things did fuck up. I was correct in that assumption. I know you, OBS, I see what you're doing. Alrighty, behold. Miles Edgeworth. Ace Miles Edgeworth, Attorney Investigations, TM. Copyright Capcom Company Limited 2009, all rights reserved. Continue. Ugh. All right, so we're starting off turning about airlines. Let's see how this goes. The murder that occurred in that office. The return of the great thief Yatagurasu. Thinking back, everything began on that fateful day two days ago. It's iconic. Two days earlier. I woke up next to a red carpet. I fly? <laughs> yes. Everything began high up in the air. 9,000 feet in the air to be precise. That day I joined the Mile High Club. God, that is a horrible fucking sound. I hate that. We're asking all passengers to please return to their seats and fasten their seatbelts. There we have it. Edgeworth is fucking dead. We've been playing as his corpse the whole time. <laughs> uh, why do I feel like I just woke up from a horrible nightmare? 613, huh? Guess I was out cold for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Slight turbulence indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently experiencing some slight turbulence. For your safety, we ask that you return to your seat and fasten your seat belts. I suppose turbulence is to be expected on a flight. Though admittedly, I'm less than comfortable with anything resembling earthquakes. Oh, that's true. That like that, that I actually like that. I like that they just use turbulence to justify why uh, Edgeworth passed out. I actually really like that. That's a really nice attention to detail on his character. Yeah, my head. Why won't this headache go away? I'll take care of this travel wallet later, or hand it off to an attendant. Ugh! I become a full-size JPEG. <laughs> Why is there an elevator on a plane? How does that work? When I was still but a young child, I was caught up in a murder that happened in an elevator. How long am I going to let my past haunt me? It's just an elevator. I'm a grown man now. I need to behave like one.
God fucking damn it! <laughs> what in the world happened? <laughs> Is there something wrong, sir? I must ask that you please return to your seat. Eek! <laughs> He's dead! Please calm down. You mustn't jump to conclusions without all the facts. What's wrong? Did something happen? You, you, you murderer! W what? No, no. You have it all wrong. It wasn't me. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to love this lady. Everyone, I am sorry to interrupt, but I have an important announcement. I am one of your flight attendants, say. Rhoda Ten... Rhoda Tenero. I don't get the pun there. Unfortunately, we have just had a minor accident on this flight. An accident? Don't treat us like we're stupid. I caught a glimpse. It was a murder. What? Murder? What's going on with this flight? Please, everyone, please calm down. There's no reason to panic. This flight will stay on course and make its scheduled landing. We are still currently in the middle of a rough patch of turbulence. So until we are out of this area of turbulence, I ask that you please remain seated. But, but, but someone was killed, right? I mean, what about the killer? Let me off! Please, there is no need to feel threatened. We have already apprehended the culprit. I ask that everyone please remain calm. What the heck is he talking about? Why should we remain calm? My name is Miles Edgeworth. I'm a prosecutor, and I assure you I am not the killer. Ha! <laughs> Being a prosecutor doesn't make you capable of murder, buddy. Now you listen here. I am not the killer. I simply found the body. So you say. However, I am sure that you are the perpetrator of this crime. I swear on my honor as a professional flight attendant. Oh, is that right? I know what I saw. And there's even very strong incriminating evidence to back me up. I even spoke my words in orange to show the importance. What kind of incriminating evidence is she talking about? We've already alerted the proper authorities at our destination. Until we land, you will remain in our custody by the powers vested in our captain. I'm very sorry, but please understand our situation. Your situation? I'm more concerned with mine and the direction it's going in. I'm not about to just sit idly by while I get accused of murder. Again! Miss Tenero, is it? Yes. I was wondering if you might give me a chance. A chance to do what? A chance to plead my case. And a chance to ask what you meant by incriminating evidence just now. To accuse a passenger of such a grave crime without allowing him to give without allowing him to give a proper defense. Could the professional fly attendant inside of you really call this action righteous? You have a point. Very well, I'll listen to what you have to say. But be wary of what you reveal. I'm afraid you'll only look even more suspicious if your explanation fails to satisfy. I also do not have the time to deal with you all day, so please make this quick. Of course, as you wish. Hi, right, here, bro. What happened? Uh, Edgeworth is being accused of murder again. Also, uh, we got good attention to his uh, character uh, backstory shit with... um. Him being on a plane and it being hit with turbulence, and turbulence is similar to an earthquake, so he passed out. I'm liking that part of the game a lot. <laughs> we love when we respect the characters. Very well then, let's get started. I know for a fact that I didn't kill that man in the elevator. What I don't know is what sort of evidence she has up her sleeve. I'm certain it doesn't fit with how the crime really occurred. Straight to a testimony, I like this. I swear to tell the whole truth as a professional flight attendant. Unfortunately for you, Mr. Edgeworth, I am certain you are the killer. Oh no, it's in an elevator too, yeah. <laughs> it is an elevator. <laughs> the scene I saw in front of the elevator. It was you standing there with fresh blood dripping off of the murder weapon. So if you would please, please cooperate, we'll turn you over as soon as we land. That's it? That's our evidence? Do I have anything in my organizer? Travel wallet picked up off the floor in front of the elevator isn't mine, but whose is it? Can I look at it? No. 
Crime scene notes by found at 6 15 a.m. inside the elevator, stopped at the first floor lounge. It's very it's very bright and blue in the sky for 6 15. And then Details, meals, movies, and other services inside. Touch the check button for details. Light itinerary itinerary. 6.15. Interesting. All time to show them cor correspond to our departure time zone. What's on the uh, other side? Hold on, my phone's blocking it. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything important. Best restaurants in the Shire? Is that what that says? I don't know. I think that's everything. Proof of my profession, however, I prefer to keep it in my pocket. I can check it. It's on the back here. To prosecute, each prosecutor's badge is engraved with the number of its owner on the back. <laughs> Numbers, as if we're not human on the inside like everyone else. So profound. Badges design said to reflect the relentlessness and discipline of law enforcement. It comes from the authority vested in us as strict protectors of the law. And executes the sentences much like a harsh winter frost and blood blazing summer days. To where it is to identify oneself as a prosecutor, but I have no interest in doing so. I don't think you could ask for a more perfect witness testimony. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? Not really. It's hardly perfect when there's a gaping hole in it. I already know what to do here. Only for you, killer. See, I saw it was you saying there were fresh blood dripping off the murder weapon. You mean uh, this? Miss Tanero. What, 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 what is with the yelling all of a sudden? <clears throat> Force of habit. Well, it doesn't matter. Miss Tanero, you say you saw the murder weapon dripping with blood. Is that correct? Yes, all that blood. Drip. 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 Just recalling that scene sends a chill down my spine. Sorry, but your so-called professional flight attendant training has trailed you. What? I'd like to direct your attention to this. Do not ask how I'm grabbing this with my hands cuffed. Just use your imagination. It's a travel wallet, right? But it looks a little big and bulky. The thing you saw me holding when I discovered a dead body in the elevator was this very travel wallet, Mr. Nero. What? Impossible! Now then, do you still think I'm the killer? That I killed him with a travel wallet? But, but, I, no, but I, I saw blood dripping from the wall and I know I did. As you can see, this wall is clearly stained. But if you would be so kind as to take a whiff, I think you'd agree it's only grape juice. Ah, yes, grape juice. In a very um fancy bottle, as we saw in the intro. Just grape juice. Nothing else. Alcohol doesn't exist in America. <laughs> That's right. You mistook you mistook grape juice for blood. The murder weapon dripping with blood does not, in fact, exist. No! There, that should clear up that pesky accusation. Hits from Mill Mill, I'd say. What, the grape juice? Ugh. That is... Oh. I mean, even a wallet could be deadly if it was wrapped around something heavy. I demand that you show me what's inside, please. Trembling. And the tacked on please at the end. Sounds like I've got her. There's no need to look inside, even if you can tell from its appearance that it's light. No, I can be sure of anything until I see the contents of that wall for myself. She's a persistent one. I suppose we have no choice but to see what's inside. Mr. Nero, if you'd be so kind as to open a wall and check its contents for me. All right. I usually don't pry into passengers' belongings, but we have no choice here. Let's examine this first. Grape juice, in quotation, stains the outer cover. True, it was I who dropped it in the juice, however, I did not do it out of ill intentions. Is it me or is it, uh... Alright, never mind. 
seems that this passport is all that's in here. As you saw, there is nothing but a passport inside. The surrender's your wallet with some murder weapon argument moot. Wouldn't you agree? Please, hear me out, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it now? Well, I was wondering, whose passport is it exactly? Can I take a look? Why not? I'm rather curious myself. Th this is... Just as I thought. This travel wallet belonged to Mr. Ackby Hicks. Which makes it the victim's property. Type P. CC, am I? Uh, do I just have short-term memory loss? Because I have no idea what you're talking about right now. Hmm. That's what's on the passport. Oh. See, you're better at these games than I am. <laughs> you pay attention to that shit when it's presented to you. I wait until I can look at it. Yeah. Let me actually look at it. Can I, like, look at the passport? Oh, and someone's Steam notification is blocking the bu button. I'm in the passport. Can I not look at it? There's no money whatsoever inside this travel wallet. Oh, it's probably. Oh, it's probably his blood type, actually. I know Japan cares about that stuff, so. How dare you? Law doesn't come in pee? Oh. Then I have no fucking idea. Set yourself. You claim to be holding this wallet in your hands when I found you. Not normally, anyway. Perhaps I didn't misconstrue the wall for the murder weapon, but it seems that I wasn't wrong about who the culprit is. As you claim the murder weapon is not the travel wallet. However, it is something you stole from Mr. Hicks after you were done with the vile deed. I find it hard to believe myself, but your motive was very simple. You were out to steal Mr. Hicks's money, weren't you? Good thing I looked at the wallet. So even though I didn't have the murder weapon on me, you still suspect me, I see. You stood up at the crime scene with the victim's wallet in your hands. How can I turn a blind eye and not suspect you of foul play? Her hair is a fucking cube. She has a fucking tower on on the back of her hair. I knew you were gonna post that. <laughs> is something you saw from Mr. Hicks? And I hard to believe myself, but your mode was very simple. You're about to steal his money. Easy peasy. Literally, cube. <laughs> I wonder if I might get a word in, Mr. Nero. Well, what is it now? Mr. Nero, I wonder if you noticed the contradiction within your own testimony. But what are you talking about? Simply put, as you saw with your own eyes. The only thing inside Mr. Hicks' wallet was his passport. Ah! If I really was after his money, then why would I steal penniless travel wallet? Er, but that's right, you, Mr. Edgeworth, you didn't know it was empty when you stole it. You would like to think that, but that's not possible. What do you mean it's not possible? There's no way the killer didn't know that the wallet was empty to begin with. Oh, and what makes you so sure? How could I show her that the killer knew the wallet to be empty from the get-go? Um... Good to know. Take that. If you would recall the crime scene, I admit that the wallet was probably not empty at the time of the murder. That's pretty evident by the bills and cards strewn around the inside of the elevator. Oh no! I think you've come to realize the problem with your logic. I would surmise that the victim wallet fell out during their struggle. 
and that's when its contents emptied onto the floor of the elevator. I doubt the killer could have missed such an occurrence. And then you're saying? Yes, according to your supposition, if I were the killer, I would have been going after a wallet I knew to be empty. And since I clearly was not attempting to gather the scattered money, it renders your argument of theft completely invalid. I, I, I... Forgive me, please. Uh, are you saying the intendant's wrong? So that guy isn't the killer? Ha, huh, don't believe it, everyone. It's a trick. Will you all please be quiet? Mr. Nero. Yes? You lost your cool when you saw the dead body. Once the lounge was dark and looking into the light from the elevator, it's easy to see how you mistook the wallet in my hand for the murder weapon. I take no offense that you thought I was the killer. Mr. Hedgeworth. Thank you for releasing me. Oh god, fucking Gaster is in here. <sighs> That's one way to show a foreign language. <laughs> Uh. Miss Tanira, if you could please translate, I'd be much obliged. It sounds like Borginian, but I... I don't understand any of it. There's another attendant on this flight who... I said that he is giving the runabout! Mm. Uh, what voice do I go? I don't require an interpreter. I speak English just well, see? You, the attendant. Yes, sir. I want this person to be under the arrest until we arrive at the airport. I'm sorry, sir, but well, what exactly are you hoping for? What is it you want? I have finished talking to the likes of you. Please, I would like to hear why you would like me to be held under arrest until we land. You, how dare you try to waste my time? You were the one who snuck your nose into my affairs. I wanted to spend even at least one more second with my precious art. I have no time for other things. I know what you are. I see through you. Insolvent. Yes, I am pretty sure that's how you say it in English. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm, I'm retiring that voice. That one's killing me. Hmm. You know what he is, Virginian, um, the same, uh, isn't that the same nationality of that kid, um, in Apollo Justice? Also, I'll, I'll take care of that, CC. Yeah, that voice is getting retired. That voice does not work when I'm sick. Take a sippy. I know what you are once again, Cece. We have established I have short-term memory loss until everything I have been absorbing like a sponge is relevant, in which case I wring it out. Until I am prompted to remember something, I will not remember it. Phoenix worth shippers exposed. <laughs> Good stretch. Ugh. All right, we're good. Let me take one more sip. I have not drank a lot of water today. Ugh. All right. Let's get back to it. I'm sorry, but I don't think I caught your name. I am Zinc LeBlanc... 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 We've had that name in the series already. I'm a very wealthy man in the Virginia, but I am no ordinary rich man. I am an art dealer, a rich seller of beauty. Sir LeBlanc, what did you mean just now? Pardon? 
Um, when you said that Mr. Edgeworth was giving me the runabout, I have to explain? Unbelievable. I will say it once more, and only once. I do not have even a second to waste time is money, as they say. Yes, and yet you continue to blather on. I saw it. Yes, I did. I saw the victim go on to the elevator. Going down to the lounge. It was exactly six o'clock. And what's the significance of that time? At six, he says. Wait, you saw him at six? Ah, uh, what's the matter, Mr. Edgeworth? He understands, I see. Miss Attendant, what time did you discover the body? Well, it was a little after that patch of turbulence, so I would say around 6.15. Ah! Hicks was the name, was it? And I say that man Hicks was killed in the 15 minute time span. And the only person in the lounge at that time was this prosecutor, yes? Yeah, I was in my seat the whole time. I mean, me too, I was watching a movie and enjoying a fine glass of grape juice in quotations. I was still eating, still haven't finished, see? The other passengers have an alibi, so you have no problem with them, I suppose? No complaint, I see. Not a single word against this, right? I have no way of discounting what you have put forth at me at this point, but it wasn't me. Oh, so you say, but do you have what you say, the evidence? Mr. Edgeworth, are you really the culprit after all? Mr. LeBlanc, I suppose you're quite certain of what you saw, enough to give testimony? Of course, I was looking at that man the whole time. He was playing with that annoying little, um, small machine the whole time. Machine? Take another look-see. Hmm. Ain't a machine. Yes, that's what you people call in English, yes? It was making me crazy with the click, click, click. And that description sounds like some sort of small computer. Believe me, Mr. LeBlanc is talking about it as a cell phone. I have to say that I did see him playing with it quite a bit myself. A simple cell phone? A laptop or organizer can see, but that's kind of low budget. I hate that noisy little machine in his hand. Not a fragment of beauty, all it produces is ugly sounds. Anyway, I know what I saw. Mr. Nero. Yes? I was wondering if I might be granted permission to examine the crime scene. What? You want to examine the crime scene? If you would grant me a little measure of time, I'm sure I can produce the real culprit. Hmm. I don't like the sound of that fox in the duck pen. Yes, I think that's how you say it in English. It's fox guarding the hen house, and I believe my innocence was proven earlier. If, and if I'm given the chance, I can clear up all the remaining doubts. Mr. Nero, if you wait until we arrive, there is a good chance that some evidence will have been destroyed by them. I understand. Let me see what the captain has to say. Ha! <laughs> this should not be approved. Please, Mr. LeBlanc, in an emergency, all decisions are to be made by the captain alone. Now please wait here while I go ask the captain what to do. I'll be right back. You're not planning to erase evidence when you are doing your investigation, yes? Of course not. Ah, we will see. I just realized he has his fucking pot in his seatbelt. <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's golden. I love that. That's really fucking funny. What? Unbelievable. I'm in your debt, Mr. Nero. However, there is one condition. I am to supervise you. Can you agree to that? Of course. I see no problem with that stipulation. Only natural as I am still suspect in this case. Ugh. I take full responsibility and will watch Mr. Edgeworth's every move. I hope this is reassurance enough that there will be no foul play. Well, we did say something about Hannah has houses earlier, so... If you need my help with anything, please feel free to touch the partner button. Why does everybody keep telling me about that? Alright, let's do some examining. It's my seat. Unfortunately, I didn't bring anything particularly useful for an investigation. It's not as if I'm constantly prepared for such a thing to occur. Ah, that's right. I was in the middle of recreating a chess game. Just an observation, but aren't there too many red knights around that lone blue pawn? Nonsense. It simply shows that the blue pawn is no match for the red knight's might. I love how that rhymes. <laughs> uh, d -d -d don't get near me, you criminal. He said, don't get near me, you criminal. 
I am not the killer, and I intend to prove that starting now. Well, that's the contrary to the, 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 the facts, he said, but that's contrary to the facts. I can understand his English just fine, thank you very much. What's a lifesaver doing here? I bought it at the flight shop just beyond the lounge. If something should happen, having one could save your life. I think this guy could have been better off not taking a plane to begin with. <coughs> oh. Alright, let's talk to... Who does he remind me of? I don't know. I may have a word with you. This munch, steak, munch, munch, so munch, awesome munch. It's great to hear, however, I would like to ask you a few questions. I munch was here munch munch the whole time, so munch wouldn't know. Ito speak, please pick one. Munch 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 munch. <laughs> oh fuck man. What did uh Did he just call himself the muncher in that fairly odd parent special? Where uh Chester? But man, remember when Chester was in fairly odd parents? <laughs> I forgot he existed. <laughs> uh, but literally, I just remember the uh, munch, 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 munch from that special. I think he chose to eat. Yes, I can hear that. All right, let's see here. Hey, miss, how about another glass? Excuse me, but I was wondering if you knew anything about the murder. How about it? How about a glass together? I'm sorry, but I must decline. I wasn't talking to you, I was asking the cute attendant. I'm sorry, Edgeworth is adorable? How dare you? You need a refill, I'd be happy to bring you another glass any time. You got it, toots. That, that's no way to talk to a lady. Is this the lounge? Yeah, it is the lounge. Bro, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm so... Do planes have like lounges and elevators? Is this a thing? I just wasn't aware of it. Do planes have elevators? Airplanes have elevators, not the fucking flaps. I mean like an, an elevator on a plane. Airplane elevator, what is it? How does it work? God damn it. This is very difficult to find information on because it, it, it's confusing it for the elevator, uh, like part of the wing. Elevator on a plane inside. All right, what about a, a plane with multiple floors? I think that's possible. Plane with multiple floors. Double-decker planes, double-deck aircraft, okay. They do exist, hooray. Can't find anything on a fucking elevator, though. That's the weirdest shit. I want to thank you for your help back there, Mr. Nero. It was nothing. You should thank the captain for granting you permission. Just so everything is perfectly clear, I still don't trust you to that extent. I don't want you to think our standing with me has changed. I see. I will bear that in mind. I received an order from the captain earlier. He wanted you to know that we reserve the right to stop your investigation. We feel we are not making progress. And when we do, he asks that you please return to your seat at that time. So the time runs out as crew's discretion, does it? I don't mind a way to describe Mr. LeBong's testimony before time's up. I understand. By the way, is there any place that you think you can think where the killer might hide on board? I don't think so. After every first class passenger was accounted for in his or her seat, we need a thorough search of the plane. As for business and economy class, no one can move between those two classes in first class without a staff keycard. We found no record of a keycard being used at all, which means that I have a first class killer on my hands. At least I know that much for sure. 
One other thing. No one else has been allowed near this crime scene since the murder was discovered either. It begins! Now then, let's get started. Well, where should we start from? Hmm, let's start with Mr. LeBon's statements. The crime occurred between 6 a.m. and 6.15 a.m. During that interval, the only person in the lounge was myself, which would make me the prime suspect. However, since I did not kill Mr. Hicks, it means that the killer was around somewhere. So there's something for our logic. If we are to believe what you say is true, then yes. Hmm. The first sort of business will be to gather information to win your trust. Alright, let me... Let me look at the uh, Sky Magazine again. Because that's the only thing I have with, like, time stuff on it. Mm. So there was a movie at 6.15. We'll have to keep that in mind. Also, uh... I'm gonna save real quick. Just looking something. Uh... Don't mind me. I know I was using that. There we go. Don't mind me. No, nothing weird is happening. Okay, I did make that that button is the start button. I'm paranoid. Okay, you never know when something bad could happen. Though it is a slow saver, I will say that. All right. All right, exam. Well, let me remind myself of my logic. What clues point to where the killer could have been? You don't have anything to connect that to at the moment. What floors does this elevator service? Only the first and second, although it can also go down to the cargo hold. However, that requires a flight crew key card. So the only floors accessible to passengers are the first and second, huh? Inside the elevator that connects with one first floor and second floor. Don't rust until I've expected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. <laughs> Alright. Let's look at his weird necklace. What's going on here? Hanging off this lanyard. Something's missing with this picture now. If I could just put my finger on it. I don't think we have that yet. What's this sinister looking figure on the floor over here? Oh, that's a piggy bank of our company's mascot, Mr. Ifly. It's just one of many pieces of merchandise we sell at our in flight shop. This bank is a limited edition, and it is so popular that we're down to our last one. We have an in-flight shop? Yes, it's just beyond the lounge to the right. The Charlotte store is closed at the moment, though. But it was open the whole flight up until Mr. Hicks's body was discovered. There's blood on here. Could this have been the murder weapon? But if I examine the card, only is strewn all over the floor of the elevator. I guess it was on Mr. Hicks' wallet at some point. All right, let's examine him. Uh, let's examine Hicks himself. There we go. I doubt anyone was. was bleh. I doubt anyone was expecting to find a dead body in an elevator on this flight. So, Mr. Hicks, he re he's really dead. Yes. She's trembling. Although, it, although I can't fault her for what there's a corpse right here. Mr. Hicks, if you're really dead, then please answer yes. I see she's over the trembling now. Although new symptoms seems to have appeared. Anyways, I should focus on the victim's body. Let's see. There's blood on the back of his head. Could that have been the cause of death? The piece have been struck very hard. Even his glasses are broken. Can I check his pocket right here? There's something sticking out of his pocket. I hope he won't mind if I take a look at what's inside. It's a picture. Looks like it was taken inside a building somewhere. Well, now we see what was on the lanyard. 
think that might be everything. In hand? Okay. We got a lot of shit. Try to do some deducing. Time to do the deduce. There we go. Eureka! Eureka! I fucking love that. Mr. Hicks's machine is nowhere to be found. His machine? His cell phone, Mrs. De Niro. Oh, so I guess it's because it's not here. Yes, I think we can safely deduce that the killer took it. So, missing phone. I think that's the only deduction I could do here. The button is in fact gone. some spilled grape juice in rotations in front of the elevator. I assume it was spilled during the turbulence. Oh, we must clean that up or someone might get hurt. Aha! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I found some very important evidence. What is the most important piece of evidence in this scene? Take that! What is it? A little smudge, but I think we can both agree they, they are a set of footprints. So you think? Yes, these belong to our killer. Oh, then maybe we should check the shoe sizes of everyone in first class. I don't think that will be of any help to us. Unfortunately, the prints are too smudged, so it'll make it hard to get a definitive match. Oh, I see. Alright, so we got that one down. Glasses and candles thrown into disarray by the turbulence. It's been a while since I've seen this big of a mess. It's terribly embarrassing. I thought it was an earthquake for a second. And I frantically started searching for gas valves to shut off. I guess the shaking of the plane was bad enough to be mistaken for a real earthquake. Not that I wouldn't know since I wasn't conscious for most of it. Cannot examine that. I can look at the piano. Grand piano, apply to this plane. It can play music of whatever CD we insert into its CD drive. But it's not a piano, it's more like an overgrown music box. Oh, but it's keys to press along with the music as though someone is really there playing it. Some people have entirely too much money to waste on overly complex toys. Uh, what about this? What or who is this? This is a bronze statue of the fly founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo iFly. One on the left is when he was in his 40s and the other is of him in his 80s. Did the man actually age in the span of four decades? Maybe I need to squint more. Counter windows offer a glimpse of the sky, but these clouds, they tell me nothing. Mr. Edgeworth, you look like you're taking in the, talking to the clouds. Is that so? Then tell me, what do you suppose I said to him? I don't know, but it looks like a rather one-sided conversation. The clouds, they tell me nothing. <laughs> Bottles and glasses must have been broken by the turbulence. But a bit of broken glass, please be careful when passing through the area. Thank you very much for the warning, Mr. Edgeworth. However, no matter how kind you are to me, no, that does not clear up any suspicions I have about you. I wasn't warning you for the sake of clearing my name. The store leads to the flight attendant's room. Please understand it's off limits to unauthorized personnel. Scent of woman's perfume. One would think perfume would smell great. However, to me, it simply smells. Not that I have any interest in what lies beyond the store. Perhaps we should return to investigation, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth? Sorry, spaced out for a second there. Uh, can I look at this? Top of a chair, you're not a victim of the turbulence. Ah, no! Look at all that grape juice staining the back! You may not look it, but this chair was extremely valuable. It was? Yes, it was used when the Rocker Pals came to this tour plane. The Rocker Pals leader sat in this very chair. I'm sorry, but what are these Rocker Pals? I can't believe you've never heard of them. They're all the rage. The Rocker Pals are an extremely popular international man. They had the Pals part as they became more popular, especially among teens. 
Ah, that explains it. I'm really not one for the music of today. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe about them later. On second thought, I can already see how confusing the conversation would get. I mean, hey, you're in to fucking steal Samurai, Edgy. Just saying. Can everybody stop playing games on Steam right now? You're in the way of the buttons I need to press. Invite shop just beyond these shutters. Well, you know I have permission to open them, so I'm afraid I must leave them closed. <sighs> All right, what about this thing? Can I look at it? No. All right. I think it's time for some logic. The knife was found inside the elevator. <clears throat> Are they broken? Blood. There we go. Statue with blood on it lying next to the body of a man who was beaten to death. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, I think I figured something out. Y yes, what is it? The way the blood is on this looks like it matches up with the wound on his head. Oh, aren't we deserving a master of the obvious title? Well, what do you think, Mr. Edgeworth? Don't you think that's worth investigating? Hmm, it would appear that this figurine is a murder weapon. Oh, I just knew it. I mean, I can't think of any other connection. Hmm, perhaps Master of the Oblivious would be more befitting. Tanira's trying her best. I mean, granted, so am I. I'm about as smart as her at right now. <clears throat> Grant, we had to connect that logic ourselves first, so maybe Edgeworth isn't that good either. <laughs> All right. Spilled grape juice. Air was the killer. Hmm. Do I have to connect that the, um... Do I have to connect that the killer was in the elevator? I mean... Uh, where else would he be? <laughs> How else are you could commit murder without being in the elevator? I guarantee you this will somehow be incorrect. Where was the killer? The elevator, connect. True, there wasn't anyone else in the lounge other than myself right before the turbulence. But the killer was in the elevator along with the victim, then that's a different story. Only I could prove that the killer rode the elevator with Hicks. Um... I don't think that proves that they were in there. Or does it? Hold on, saving again. <laughs> we take no L's. Or maybe we do. Taking a personal L. Give it a shot. That really worked. I'm sorry, but I don't understand. I can prove that someone other than myself was around at the time of the murder. What? R really? Like I said, Ace Attorney is like trying to figure out how smart does the game want you to be. I felt like it didn't want me to be that smart. No, it did. It's really, it's really hard sometimes. Proof is in the pudding, or rather the grape juice in this case. These footsteps here could vest me this very fact. That someone exited the elevator, alive. Seeing as how the victim is dead, that would mean the second person. But couldn't the footprints be from Mr. Hicks himself? Ah, but if you take a look at our victim's shoes, you can see the soles are spotless. Which means... 
Mr. Hicks wasn't alone in the elevator. In fact, it's quite the opposite. There was actually one other person inside the elevator. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. What the fuck you gonna do? What's going on over there? Oh shit, he's coming. He's arriving. Unforgivable. This is unforgivable. Do you understand why I'm saying the movie is late? It is the same level of that as if the plane arrived late. Um, but the movie? What? I will not talk to you anymore. You were just wasting my time. What is the matter, Mr. LeBon? If there is no emergency, please return to your seat, sir. Do not tell me what to do. I need not sit down. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, did you prove you are innocent yet? If you would like, I will prove my innocence to you right now. What? Nonsense! Are you saying my eyewitness testimony is mistaken? Not mistaken, merely that there is room for doubt. I'd be most honored if you could please tell me what you saw in detail once more. Fine, suit yourself. Alrighty. Versus LeBlanc. So, we're going to delay our little um, confrontation for a little bit. We got to take a quick three minute ad break. In the meantime, this is going to be a great opportunity for y'all to get some snacks, get some water, get to, get some drinks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to do. And as soon as we're all wrapped up with that, we'll get right back into business with the testimony. So with all of that being said, my dear people, there we go. Bye for now.
Welcome back, everybody. Hope y'all had a good break. Hope y'all got done what you need to get done. And what we're going to get done is we're going to get done embarrassing the fuck out of this motherfucker. Actually, hold on. Let me, um... Just tweak something a little bit. Don't mind me just hitting myself in the face. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Just, uh, just, just modded, modded DS things. Don't mind me. Don't mind me at all. I'm certain I saw Mr. Hicks enter that elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to the six and the twelve. The body was discovered in fifteen minutes after that in the lounge. Yes. Then you, the only person in the lounge at that time, must be the criminal. So the long seclusion seemed to make logical sense. After all, the only person in the lounge at the supposed time of the murder was me. So, my eyewitness testimony, if you think you could destroy that, then come, let me see. Hurry, do I look like a man who is having the time to wait for you? Why is he so irritated? I'm the one accused of murder here. The man must find a way to discredit Mr. LeMong's account somehow and fast. Alright, let's see here. So, I saw him enter the elevator. It was when the needles on my pocket watch pointed to 6 and the 12. So yeah, 6 o'clock. The body was discovered 15 minutes after that in the lounge, yes? Then you, the only person in the lounge at the time, must be the criminal. Alright, so, this. Objection! What? How? Ugh. I say it's worth around $9.99. What are you talking about? Were you not intending to sell it to me? It's not for sale. And you're the only person in the lounge at the time must be the criminal. That is the most mistaken way of thinking I've ever heard of. No, no, no. Your silly opinion is what is mistaken. Please calm down the both of you. In a sense, you are both mistaken. Well, if that isn't the pot calling the kettle black, then I don't know what is. He certainly has a lot of confidence in his testimony. Push comes the shop, I may need to press him for more information. That elevator. Press him a little more. I assume the pocket watch in this case is the one you keep checking, is that correct? Oh, you noticed. It is very expected antique, I will have you know. The feeling is wonderful when I fully wind it up by hand. Hmm, it does look very well designed and quite classy. I will have to charge you if you want to touch it. That's quite all right. Let's continue with your testimony. Hmm, what a cheap man you are. Now return to the time you wasted to act to me. And we must. I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator at six o'clock. Fifteen minutes, then you. Hold it. It's true that I found the victim's body at six fifteen, and that's when I found the two of them as well. You see, it all matches my testimony. Hold it. Mr. LeBlanc, were you able to get a good look at the inside of the elevator at that time? Of course, I saw what was inside, and you are sure that the victim was in the elevator alone. Yes, the only person inside was that Mr. Hicks man. Hmm, this last outburst is a bit too important to let go. The only person inside that was Miss the Mr. Hicks man. Now we present it. Mr. LeBlanc. What is it? There is a very glaring contradiction in your testimony. What do you mean? Please take a look at the area in front of the elevator. There are uh, there at the spilled grape juice. Yes, and will you admit that you also spilled it with the blood? No, it spilled itself during the turbulence. But the interesting thing here is the set of grape juice footprints. The footprints? Yes, the ones that lead from within the elevator out into the lounge itself. It's evidence that proves that someone other than Mr. Hicks has ex exited the elevator alive. <clears throat> there must have been another person in the elevator with Mr. Hicks. Now then, I'm done playing games. Why don't you tell us the truth? I don't speak Wing Ding Gaster. Can you please translate for us? So 
sorry, I got distracted. What were we talking about? Um, something about accusing me of murder or something. Yeah, sure, whatever. Yeah, I, I, I did it. Um, I'm distracted. <laughs> No way, that's totally impossible, I guess is what he said. No way, that is totally impossible. I know there was no other person in there. I saw it with my own eyes. If you want to know what I think, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't think Mr. LeBlanc is lying to us. I suppose you're right. He doesn't seem to be lying. Then what does it mean? What about this contradiction? Mr. LeBlanc, please, just once more, will you recall the details of what you written this for me? Eh... <sighs> All right, I'm not distracted anymore. <laughs> I was very upset when Mr. Hicks passed by my seat. I was always checking the time over and over again. I happened to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. And then I saw clearly in the elevator he was entering. But I swear there was no one else inside. No one. Mr. LeBlanc, if you would please calm down. What? Dare you to... Dare... Dare you to have an... Oh, dare you two have an issue with my eyewitness testimony? Ah, n no, not at all. Please forget I said anything. Yet again, he doesn't appear to be lying. But I can't let this testimony stand as the truth. Alright, let me look at my evidence. Hmm... I was always checking the time over and over again. Having to follow that man with my eyes when he passed me. I saw clearly in the elevator, but I swear there was no one else inside, no one. Hold it. Is it possible that someone was hiding inside? What? You dare insult me? I have belief in my eyesight. When I look for art to sell, I am told often I have great sight for the arts. I think the phrase you were looking for was great sense, although that's debatable. But is it possible someone was just outside of your line of sight? You are persistent, I tell you, I looked clearly. I swear there was no one else inside, no one. Let's press on this. Why were you looking at him? Are you still upset now? I am always upset, the only time I am not is when I have a piece of art in my hands. It's surprisingly easy to believe that about him. But I was even more upset when Mr. Hicks walked by me. I was always checking the time over and over again. Why were you so attendant to time? Because, because something unforgivable was happening. Hmm, come to think of it, you were yelling about something unforgivable earlier. I was giving a complaint to the attendant about a movie starting time. Return back to me my time, in money. You understand the point? Money? Movie? Is he talking about the in-flight one that's mentioned in the magazine? Hmm, summary of the plot and... A summary of the plot and the start time. Interesting. It was supposed to show license to love, laugh, maim, and murder. I cannot see that movie in my country. You can only see it on international flights. I look forward greatly to that movie. I check my pocket watch whenever possible so I would not miss it. I even set my pocket watch to the destination time when I came aboard. So my watch is not wrong, it matched the schedule. But the movie was still late, very, very late. Your pocket watch, I'd like to ask you a little more about it, if that's all right. Will not start so I check my pocket watch many times. So this movie you mentioned is the one listed in the Sky magazine. Yes, I was so looking forward to watching License to Love, Laugh, Maim, and Murder. Mr. Tenira, mi no, Mrs. Tenira, was this movie shown on this flight? Yes, it was shown at the scheduled time. Isn't it possible you simply slept through it by accident? Nonsense, you doubt me? N no, now stop pointing at me like that. Odd, how did he miss a movie that he was clearly hoping to see? I checked my pocket watch a great number of times, that much I know for sure. My watch is set to my destination's time, I always set it when I board the plane. Let me double check this one. To our departure time zone. Objection! Mr. LeBlanc, you said this just now in your testimony. A literally what we just presented on, yes. Uh, now if you want now if your watch has been set to our destination's time zone, 
would mean that your watch is displaying the time of our destination. Yes, and the correct time is worth its six cents. I would like you to take a look at this. If you believe the Sky Magazine, clocks on this flight run in accordance with the time of our departure time zone. Of course, the movie schedule was also created. Movie schedule was also created with that in mind. Mr. Nero, for confirmation's sake, what time zone is this flight aligned to right now? Well, we made a short stop at a transfer point. That's right. It was in that small Asian country, the Republic of Zhengfa. But we didn't readjust our onboard clocks at the time. So right now we are still running on Borginian time. What? The time difference between Morginia and our destination is nine hours. In that case, it's only natural that your watch would be out of sync with the schedule. Further, with your analog watch set to our destination's time, it would appear to be running three hours fast when compared to the flight's onboard clocks. It also changes everything about your testimony. You can bet one million cents on that. In light of this information, it means you saw Mr. Hicks three hours prior at 3 a.m. <laughs> the fucking breakdown. <laughs> That's a funny one. Should clear up all of the remaining accusations. So this is base so this basically widens the time frame for the time of death, right? Yes, because Mr. LeBlanc saw the end victim enter the elevator at 3 a.m. Means that the time of death could be anywhere from 3 to 6.15 a.m. The question now is was there's Mr. Hicks during the span of time and what was he doing? Um, I've got something to say. And you are? Yeah, um, oh. I'm Cammy Meal. I'm a flight attendant. That fucking smile is not doing it for me. <laughs> oh my god, I hate that smile. I hate, I hate, I hate that mouth. I, ha I hate when teeth are drawn like that. Well, no. I think it's more, I don't know. Something about just not <laughs> doing it for me. Like, on any level. <laughs> what do you mean, Cammy? Uh, I saw Mr. Hicks sing his see at 5 a.m., you know? What? How can you be so sure of the time? Oh, that's right. He pushed his call button while we were parked at the transfer point. Ah, uh, the stop we made for refueling and cargo transfer in Zhang Fa, correct? Yes, it was from 4 to 5 a.m. according to our clocks. During that time, did any of the passengers leave or did any new ones board this flight? No. Not a single person got off got off or on in Zhang Fa. What about the flight crew? The few who were handling the cargo transfer might have temporarily gotten on or off. But eventually, everyone including Cammy and myself came back on the plane. Cammy meal, chamomile tea. There's the pun. I was wondering what it was. <laughs> so basically, I can assume that no one got left or got on since our initial takeoff. Interesting. I should keep that in mind. Yeah, and I answered his call. I can tell you Mr. Ackby Hicks was there in his seat when we took off again at 5 a.m. There's meals, testimony. All right, then that puts the time of the motor between 5 and 6.15 a.m. Okay, now what time did you come down to the lounge, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, I remember coming down here almost as soon as we left the Republic of Zing Fa. Ah! You, you were here the whole time from 5, yes? And you are the only one who could be the killer. Mr. Edgeworth, were you really here in this lounge the entire time from 5 a.m. onwards? Unfortunately, yes. But then, how do we explain the footprints? Is that not obvious? The man waited for Mr. Hicks here in this lounge, waited to kill him. And then he put the corpse onto the elevator. That is when the turbulence happened. My eyewitness testimony may have been mistaken. What time I saw Mr. Hicks enter the elevator on the second floor does not matter. Is the entire incident concluded here in this lounge? Everything happened in this lounge? Is that what you really believe, Mr. LeBron? What? Do you have another idea? I simply feel that there is something out of place in the scenario you presented. 
Is there something that can tie this crime to a location other than the lounge? Ah, oh, fuck. What do they want me to present? I hate this. I hate when they do this because there's like multiple. Like, I'm trying to point out it happened in the elevator. And then Brees thought the refueling and was involved between four and five. We asked that passengers remain on board. Thank you for cooperation. So you see when we took off again at 5 a.m. Hit on the back of his head. Oh, I even check this. Damn. Some blood on one of the corners. Could the piggy bank have been the murder weapon? Oh. Insert the coins. I have to say for a piggy bank, it's made rather well. So long. I'm not sure there's an easy way to take your money out. I'm sure that coin made it in safe and sound, CC. It's been bothering me greatly, but why does nobody know how to properly capitalize in space nouns anymore? <sighs> Something I didn't tie the crime to a location other than the lounge. Old-fashioned Edgeworth. <laughs> Between five... Wait, maybe the footprints. Take that. These footprints, in which direction do you think these are headed? How would be in the in-flight shop? Correct, they are heading in the direction of the shop. But they look disconnected, they end all of a sudden. You're right to point out that they do not form one continuous trail to the shop. However, there is another piece of evidence that connects the shop to a crime scene. Sets of footprints, what else points to the in-flight shop? Take that. Murder weapon, this piggy bank is sold at the in-flight shop. It is sold there and not and only there. It is not displayed here in this lounge. And then it find its way here. Don't you find that a bit suspicious? It's a trivial point. It only means you repaired it, taking it from the shop first before coming here. This would prove you are innocent at all. Ugh. So no way to win with this man. If I may, what is it? Um, you see, well, it's just as Mr. Edgeworth says. Oh, and why you know so? Well, it's just that that piggy bank was there in the shop. I saw it with my own eyes. And when was this? It was maybe around 5.40 a.m.? Isn't that just before we hit that patch of turbulence? That's right. You were in the shop just before the turbulence? Um, yes, I was. Come to think of it. 
Miss Tanira, when I found the body, I believe you came out of that door. Yes, I did. It was beyond that door. That's the flight attendant's room. Then you were on the first floor? Yes. I had to do something at the shop and in the flight attendant's room. So I went to the shop first and then to the flight attendant's room. So you're saying you passed by me at some point. Yes, you seemed really into the issue of Sky Magazine you were reading at the time. I don't suppose you noticed me walking by. Hmm, I vaguely recall someone walking by, but I didn't take notice of who it was. Anyway, the Piggy Mank was definitely there at the shop when I went there. Why did you go to the shop in the first place? I went there for a work-related matter. Work, you say? Yes, the upkeep of the shop is also one of my responsibilities. Why do you not say anything until now is what I want to know? In any case, I believe it's clear that the shop needs to be investigated as well. Shall we head over there then? Well, what is it now? Aren't you forgetting something, Miss Rhoda? You don't you need the captain's permission to check the shop? No, I haven't forgotten. But I already asked him for permission to search the entire plane. So I think we're alright. Huh? That's weird. What is? Well, I just talked to the captain, see? And he said that he didn't give you permission to do anything like that at all. What is the meaning of this, Miss Tanero? It means she's lying. Go on, admit you are. You said you had permission to search all over, but you don't. And yet, here you are. You, flight attendant, what are you trying to do? Pull the sheep over us? The captain's calling for you, Miss Rhoda. Oh, but don't worry. I already got permission to search the shop from the captain. See, unlike you, I do things the right way. Miss Tanero, why would you do such a thing? Please excuse me. Looks like I get to be in charge now. Please go back to your seat, Mr. LeBlon. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, you'd follow me. I will be your guide from now on. Something about Miss Tanero that has piqued my curiosity. Mmm, meal. I'm a be I'm a be real like that smile. I did everything's ruined. Everything's ruined. Not really. <laughs> Not really. Research might be done later. <laughs> Uh. All right, let me hit a quick save real quick. Brandon, that might run me into spoilers. Any uh, research? I'm wary of that. Uh. All right, into the shop we go. This is the in-flight shop. It's quite a mess in here. You think? I guess I'll have to clean things up then. <laughs> Hold on! You can't clean up a potential crime scene. Gonna miss Miss Tanira though. Yeah, she's nice. Oh, thank goodness. I hate cleaning so much. Mustn't rush things here. I must remain cool, calm, and collected. Because this piggy bank was left at the crime scene. There is a very good chance that the killer had paid this place a visit. Alright, let's take a look at these. Well, what are these? Oh, those are a company's completely original line of suitcases. They're practically lying out the door. That's how popular they are. You should buy one and see how... Like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's not how things work on this flight, but in the real world, you try, then buy. No way! But either way, it doesn't really matter. True, either way, why would they were my suitcase after they boarded the plane? Anyway, see that? Just look at all that Mr. Ifly heads painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're paying on with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? He's certainly making something jump inside my stomach. Huh? 
Uh, I guess there's no fooling your refined taste. You looked like you really wanted to get one. And I thought I was going to finally make my first sale, but you saw right through it. Let that sun know. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? But I never showed any interest in it to begin with. <laughs> it really is pretty horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? The suitcase was designed by Ms. Rhoda. Ms. Nero designed this? Yeah, it was a company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. <laughs> sharp? Like stinky sharp cheddar, maybe. I really have no idea what the big woods decided to go with it. It's so... Bleh. Sunira designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! You okay? I'm fine. Please watch yourself, Miss Mew. Playing the suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. Here, I'll play it back. Alright. There's a wide selection of souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I'd suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs on this trip. Okay, then how about you buy something for me then? As a present. I'd buy the suitcase. It's like an ugly Christmas sweater. Kinda. But for suitcases. I don't know. You, you would definitely never have any trouble finding your luggage, though, that's for sure. I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy anything. But I've had my but I've had my eye on that pendant for such a long time. <laughs> I can give you a reason. <laughs> Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something, and then we'll talk. There are all kinds of luxury name brand merchandise for sale in this display case, and they're all lined up in such a manner as to scream, Buy me to any passersby. Lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. Some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? Care to buy one? I sense that this shop is one shopper away from being sued. Okay. Let me check the broken one. Less plain turbulence. Mm. The glass from this display case's door is shattered all over the floor. Looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Hmm? Wait, actually, I think there is something. What's this? A mini captain's hat? Okay. Stuffed toys, just like the one Miss Meal is holding, are on display here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one, too. We could be like twinsies. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuffed animal abuse when she says that? Oh dear, why is she doing that thing? So I've checked the glass, I've checked that. Stuff on the floor here, but nothing's really coming up of that. I guess it's time for some logic. Flight, invite suitcase to place can be dangerous. Give her a rise, Fumo, no. <laughs> Look at my evidence. Actually, the feral one, no. <laughs> Keep her away from my chest cavity, please. <sighs> I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. So what do you think about what has happened regarding this case? 
Uh, I don't know. I guess I think you're the killer, Mr. L though, Mr. Edgeworth. I can assure you that I'm here in the shop to prove just the opposite. Eh, uh, but it was me that got you the permission to look around. You know? So don't forget that, okay? <laughs> How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Well, you know how to really show your thanks? You see that item for sale over there? Sorry, but you're going to have to make do my words of appreciation. Alright, let's show her some stuff. Um, Piggy Bank. Miss Rhoda said that this Piggy Bank was in this shop, right? Do you find her a tiny bit suspicious? I don't think I can say either way yet. There's not enough evidence to convince me that she was lying about anything back there. Are you sure about that? Missing cell phone? So, what is that? Are you going to give it to me? It's not even here! <laughs> I, I, I just show her, hey, there's a cell phone that existed. Do you know anything about it? Are you gonna give it to me? Are you gonna give me the absence of a cell phone? <laughs> what, do I just steal her phone? Is that how I do it? That'd be funny. Unless there really was something. Okay. Um, I don't think she has anything to say about that. <laughs> Give me your phone, let me see search history. It'll probably just be a bunch of things for like, melatonin. Or energy drinks. Not sure. Where are the other? Can't tell what side of the short coin she's on. Animal abuse? No! Like I said earlier, I was the one answering people's calls while we were revealing in Zengfa. And Mr. Hicks was in his seat at the time. What time was that again? You called it around 5 a.m. You were at your seat around then, too, you know. I do recall people calling for service around that time. If this turns out to be a waste of time, I must stand firm. I just know that there is a final clue or two awaiting me here in this shop. Hmm. Uh, footprints? <laughs> what is that? Are you going to give it to me in the footprints? You can go lick him off the ground, girl, if you fucking please. If that's what you want. Oh. The tiny captain's hat. I just noticed. Okay, hold up. Oh shit, something just hit me. Hold up. He's missing his hat. Hell yeah! I'm smart. I was proud of that one. I was just looking at her stuff and I was like, oh, that's where the captain's hat is from. Wait a minute. <sighs> the hat probably used to be on the piggy bank's head. Let's go and get, give it a C. Leave this piggy bank was forcibly removed from this display case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Eh, really? <laughs> don't tell me you don't know what things go where in the shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So come on, how should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. Alright, I guess I can go look at it further now. Alright, let's take a look-see. Why break glass to steal a piggy bank? I don't know, we're, f we're trying to figure that out. There's a lot of shit to examine. Glass on the store is broken. 
That's what it's the killer who broke it in order to take the piggy bank? It's a bit odd that the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus, the glass broke rather cleanly. Ah! What is it? I I touched the glass and it cut my finger. It hurts, Mr. Edgeworth. It hurts. Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. Is this the same man as the one portrayed by the statues around the elevator? Yeah, that's a paperweight of the founder of iFly Airline, Mr. Hugo iFly. On the bottom shelf, we have the cute one. The middle shelf is the realistic one. And on the top shelf, that's the floral version. F floral Are you sure about that? I mean, guess, you just said the first thing that came to your mind, right? Looks like I hit the bullseye. Mm, oh, wait, I can look at these. iFly Airlines related books line the shelf. The history of iFly Airlines, the future of iFly Airlines, the seven wonders of iFly. Fight on, iFly Airlines. Working name, Go You Airlines. I love flying. The titles make it very clear that they won't be making the top sellers list anytime soon. All right, let's look here. Hmm. So there's no glass on the inside. Look at my logic. Hmm. Let me look at the other shell. Last one, the store is broken. I must have shared the display case glass to take it. Wait, but hold up. It has handles, though. Security, there's a lock on this display case. Miss Meal, if I may ask you about this lock. Um, the one who's in charge of the shop is Miss Rhoda, so she's got the keys to all the display cases. I see. Oh, uh, I bet you want to buy something. Do you want me to go get the key from her? No, th that's all right. <laughs> so they're locked. Okay. I cannot look at the books. There's something I need to deduce. My theory is the turbulence made the piggy bank fly out of the case. Maybe. Can we go talk to the other guy? No, we're stuck in here. Okay. I haven't examined this face yet, though. Beautiful flowers and a beautiful arrangement. Feel cleansed just by looking at them. Mr. Edgeworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> That's funny. Uh. The glass was broken from inside.
I mean, maybe I deduce the... How long have I been muted? CC, how long have I been muted? Oh, I might have hit tab. Okay, 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 okay. It, it was when I hit tab. I was about to say, if y'all... I was about to say, if I have not been talking for the past 30 minutes, I was going to be pissed. Like, pissed that nobody said anything. <laughs> so thank you. Huh? Unless nobody was here, in which case, not much I can do about that. But also, hi, Circuit. Hope you're having a good time on stream today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the heads up. <clears throat> yeah, no, I was not going to figure that out. So when I uh, went to hit tab, I must have accidentally hit the uh, mute button because my mute button is uh, tilde. So that that's probably what happened. I'll need to I'll need to be careful of that now. <laughs> I've been chilling. That's good to hear. <laughs> Working on any stuff right now? About what? The killer had broken the glass to get the Mister I play bank. So I was supposed to deduce using the bank with the deductions we already made, but but like deductions I haven't like completed yet. I'm using the evidence to ask a question, not answer a question. The fuck? <laughs> mm. Should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess it'd be like that. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. I was imagining my original story at work, but I'm currently imagining a fanfic. A fanfic of what, specifically? Not working on anything today. I'm taking this week off because my batteries are just depleted. That's fair. So are mine. Work's just been brutal for me. Streaming, thankfully, um, doesn't exhaust me all too much, but... Yeah, I, I I feel you. I have had very little energy. No, no, there isn't. Which means that the glass was broken from the inside out. The key bank must have fallen over from the turbulence and right through the glass. Yeah, that's for sure. There's some of the glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hat was knocked off its head at the time, too. Eh, that's nice. Which leads me to believe that the killer took that Mr. Ifly from here after the turbulence. Alright, there we go. Z, Z, Z. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Meal, and listen when I'm talking. Wah, real. Waluigi. The murder occurred before the turbulence, which rules this piggy bank out as the murder weapon. So you mean the piggy bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake? Yes, at this point, this is a very real possibility. Um, but what if when the killer went to take Mr. Ifly, they broke the glass by accident? The display case is locked, so that's highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person who could've... Oh, and who would that be? Miss Rhoda, of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has the keys to everything. Miss Rhoda to Nero. Huh. Alright, now I should be able to logic some stuff. Double checking my uh, mic again. There we go. 
I can't wait to stop getting sick, bro. You have no idea how infuriating this is. <laughs> Ruby but a general rebuilds his robot daughter after she dies, which caused her to be trembling with fear, which triggered the general's PTSD of his earlier frontline service. How the fuck did we go from monkeys to that? I'm not trying to be facetious with that. I'm just like... How did that That's a leap. Anyways, um, suitcase, turbulence, the plane shook so much during it that I made a huge mess at the shop. So, these? Yes, there is definitely something wrong here. Uh, what's with the sun yelling? Tell me, Mr. Meal, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? Oh, well, sure, they totally use strange, like, the color. <laughs> A podcast was just talking about Blake across the Yang. My brain just works like that. Well, I'm an artist, I'm not a writer. Though I guess I'm a scripter if you look at underpuff underpuff like i never say underpuff was like don't get me wrong writing was involved but like writing to me specifically is like writing like a book like like an like, like an actual like novel or something for me that's like writing skill what i was doing was more scripting and i guess like plot writing but i wasn't really like I do the pen work, you do the brush work, yeah. <laughs> it's writing dialogue. I was writing dialogue and a basic plot for that dialogue to follow. And anything else I was doing through visual means. Anything else that happened. Getting some sips of water, don't mind me. <clears throat> And screw the cat back on. There we go. It's not what I'm talking about. Now pay attention. Ah, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth. Sorry. Ahem. These suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't they? But I guess they take after a creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Meal. Don't you find it unusual? These cases are the only things undisturbed by the turbulence. Never mind, I'd sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. On closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. <laughs> I wonder how Miss Serota would have reacted if she heard what you just said. What's wrong? She makes a good point. If it would be wise for me to watch what I say out loud. What's this? I've spotted something that's not quite right. What's so unusual about this suitcase? Take that. This is what is so odd. I don't think it's that strange at all. Okay, so I need to go for the other one. I apologize. Sorry for not being the right amount of smart ace attorney. Take that. There's something very peculiar about these wheels. Huh? As in? As in? There are no stoppers in place on these. Without stoppers, no one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And... <sighs> so, it is very likely this suitcase was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? Alright, let's take a gander. What's this? A 1200 price tag. Not exactly priced by someone with a conscience, I'd say. Let's see here. What's this? The wheel is completely covered in something. This color and this scent. It appears that the substance in question is grape juice. In quotations. But why would there be juice on the wheel of a suitcase? 
Hmm, it would appear to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. A piece of cloth. And it's soaked with blood. Ah, it's... it's blood. We get it, it's wine. <laughs> it appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to a murder after all. So, explain this to me. What does this suitcase have to do with the murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say the killer used the suitcase in some manner. So it's just to move something, perhaps? Eh, but aren't you just talking about the cloth, then? That alone is too small. A larger item would be needed to move what I'm thinking of. The thing I believe the killer used to move this suitcase was... I hope this is what you want me to present, game. Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? <laughs> I do have an artistic vision for some shots. Never hurts to add some visual flair. I've seen some fanfics do it. <laughs> but, but... In light of this, I'd say that Mr. Hicks was moved into an elevator from someplace else. Which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. So you're saying that after moving the body into the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase in here and just left it? Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing. Just that. I was thinking about what Miss Rhoda said about coming here for something. Excuse me, Mr. Edgeworth. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he has allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. I understand his sentiments, however, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Sound like fun. We can camp out and watch over everything together. I'm proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge. And I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Meal reminded me about Mr. Nero... I can't allow my investigation to end here. The truth must come to light. Hmm. I'm in the terrible and his son Ivan. The painting that has him holding his gravely wounded son in sorrow would be would fit the fanfic. I think I saw somebody draw a fucking meme of Junie with her. It, may, it might have been something else. I've never seen that piece of art, but like that what you described like sounded familiar to a piece of art I saw of Juniper. And one of her models somewhat recently. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look-see. Know that once we had landed, I was supposed to let the local police take over. Thanks to Miss Nero Miss Meal, I was able to preserve the crime scene. I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with Miss Nero in private. So I'm left wondering just what was she up to. Why did she do what she did? There must be a way for me to continue my investigation. I've been expecting you, Miles Edgeworth. Hey yo! It's her! It's Franny! <coughs> Franziska, I thought you were still in Germany. I go where I'm needed. And wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Franziska von Karma. The daughter of my mentor, Manfred von Karma. She, myself, is a prosecutor. Are you heading up this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I'm placing you under arrest. Yeah, w what? It's quite frustrating, actually. I had hoped to exact my revenge on you in a different venue. But I'll have to take what I can get. I never thought I'd see the day. When the disciple of the House of Bon Karma would become a criminal, have you no shame? 
Wait, it has all been a big misunderstanding. I didn't kill the victim. A misunderstanding? I heard all about the murder over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor and then beat him to death. Francisca, do you honestly believe that I killed a man? I suppose I should reserve judgment until after I've investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. That's as it should be. <laughs> I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from you of all people. To be perfect in every way, the fulfillment of a creed alone is what I strive for. But I have my own creed which I must fulfill, so why don't we solve this together? I have to get going. The crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. Trust me, I had no intention to. Detective Gumshoe? Oh no, Gumshoe's voice is gonna kill me with this throat. No, I'm not I'm not voicing him. Sorry. <laughs> Too slow. Ow. Listen up, I'm leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess up, understand? Mr. Edgeworth, how am I supposed to guard him? A simple yes or no, detective. Uh, yes, sir. Understood, sir. You just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth, if you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. I'll be clear. Now then, you'll excuse me. Good to see you again, Mr. Edwards, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. Thank you, Detective. I believe in you, sir. You can lean on me. I'll get you through this. I'll have to admit I'm a bit curious as to what Francisco is up to. Maybe I should ask the good detective. Very well. In that case, I have a few questions for you. Well, we will save those questions for a little bit. Because right now, we got another quick ad break coming up. This will be a great time for y'all to get some food, get some snacks, get some water, get some drinks, use the bathroom, do whatever y'all humans need to do. And as soon as we come back, we'll be talking to Detective without the voice I gave him last time. Because, yeah, no, that will murder my throat. I don't even need to try to know. <laughs> But with all that being said, uh, bye, bye for now. now.
Howdy, howdy, everybody. Hope y'all had a good break. Let me double check that I am not muted. I am not. Okay, everything's fine. Let me double check I'm not muted in other places. Okay, we're fine. I'm very paranoid about this now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope everybody had a good time while we were away. Let's go ahead and get back into the game. Let's see, what does the gumshoe have to say to us? So, how is the initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the cur owner's office, and we're taking statements now, sir. That sounds like Franziska. She was always good at quick responses to a case. I'd say she was a little too quick, sir. Oh, how so? Um, um, I rushed on over as soon as I got word of the affair, sir. But somehow when I got here, Miss Von Karma was already here barking out orders to everyone. It was kind of creepy, as though she knew there had been a murder or something. And I'd come in advance to await your flight's arrival. It is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the blue. But I still don't know why she's here in America. There must be some backstory to all of this. Miss Von Karma just kind of popped up at the prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Something about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details? It's kinda top secret, so she can't talk about it, even with me, sir. Good old Japanifornia, I know. Best location. Huh. Huh. Good, the only type of talking she likes to do is with her whip. Thus, I doubt the top secret part was what stopped her from talking to you, detective. Although, I wonder if a case had anything to do with mine. Anyway, that's about all I, the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we investigate. Yes, it is high time to resume my investigation. Starting with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. Uh, Alright, let's check on these people. Hmm, Lunchland. Not bad. I guess it's gotten big enough to warrant its own branch shops. Ooh, I've always wanted to try give their steak lunch a try. Hmm, which should I go with? I recommend our airport special World Thags Lunchboxes, only available for a limited time. We have a variety of lunchboxes made up to look like different countries' flags. If you really want one that badly, Detective, why don't you go ahead and buy one? Is, is that okay, sir? Thanks. Alright, I'm really gonna get one. Here I go. Excuse me, miss. I'll take a Star Spangled Banner lunchbox, please. I hope he's aware that that's the most expensive one on the menu. Oh, shit. Oh, no. This guy. I remember him. I forgot exactly what game he's from, though. He's from the first game. He was from the first game in the Steel Samurai case. I remember him. I'm looking from behind, I think I've seen this man somewhere before. Om um, nom nom nom. In Soviet Russia, World Flags lunchboxes eat Jew. <laughs> uh, nerfed me. Mr. Edgeworth, you gotta get him some water. Found it, lol. Oh, I feel a wave, of, a wave of creative power is coming on. It's over 9,000 lulls. For my next elite movie, it's gonna be the, the Steel Samurai Warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. Versus the World Samurai Champion of Earth. It's gonna be. It's gonna rock soar so many box soars. <laughs> Good thing it was a false alarm, right, Mr. Edgeworth? So the Steel Samurai is finally getting a movie. Completely ignoring me as usual, whimper. This man was in first class with me. He was quite shaken up by the whole affair. I'd be pretty scared too if I got caught up in a murder investigation, sir. <sighs> I did it. I made it the whole flight. I'm not scared of turbulence anymore. <sighs> this life vest is proof I made it alive. It's now my prized possession. How could you just take that from the plane? It's okay, Mr. Edgeworth. It's got nothing to do with the murder, at least. And then, a child licking the window. This child seems to be happily enjoying the sight of so many planes and the taste of this glass. I'm all excited to see this many planes, too. Just look at the size of these things. Do you like planes, too, mister? The balance between the main wings and the tail wings is really something, huh? Huh. It seems that this child derives his pleasure from a different aspect. ADHD. <laughs> Oh, but I've also got a thing for the shape of the wings, too. Here, mister, you can stand next to me. So about that plane wing. Thank you, detective, for leaving me out of this conversation. 
All right. Let's get back to it. So, you must be the captain. Why, well, yes I am, and who might you be? I'm the prodigy prosecutor Franziska von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Uh, don't you dare, Captain. Getting friendly with another woman? I'll never forgive you if you do. What are you talking about? I only have eyes for you, my dear Cammy. I wouldn't bet money on our dear Captain to be much of a reputable person. Do you don't want to ask the Captain some questions, sir? He was in the cockpit the entire time. I highly doubt he would know anything of use. Anyway, I'd like to leave that type of witness to Franziska and her whip. Ah! <laughs> Either the captain or Cammy did it. Money's on the captain. Double check everything unmuted when I did that. Okay. I had to sneeze. <clears throat> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. How long do you intend to hold me? It is impossible for me to be the criminal, I told you. <clears throat> Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, it is you. Tell this man to stop stopping me from going. Time is money. I don't even have one second to s of wasteful time to spend. You finished taking his statement yet? Yep, all done, sir. I do not concern if you're not done examining if you're not done examining the cargo hold. I want my cargo back. If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay. Art? What sort of art? Mr. LeBlanc is an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down the cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. From folk costumes to stone statues, I sell all kinds of arts. Oh, costumes? Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat. And it looks like that other piece of cloth. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Thank you for pointing that out, Edgeworth. I would not have noticed. <laughs> Mr. LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Hmm? Oh, it's a Virginian cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose? Yes, of course. This fabric is so famous, orders come from over the seas for more. Then, this is the cargo you were talking about earlier. No, 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 my cargo this time is much, much mini gigantic. You, detective, when can I have my cargo move? You can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. The stubbornness of you police, it is no good. It is no good that the attendant refuses to exit the attendant's room, too. That attendant? I wonder if he's talking about Miss Tenero. What did you mean by that attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken in the attendant's room for her interview, and they still have not come out. They make no sign of coming out either. When I finish my own interview much earlier, quicker than her. Why is Miss Tenero's interview the only one that's taking up so much time? There she is. She arrives. Miles Edgeworth, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Yes, I was able to obtain the cooperation of the flight attendants. Speaking of the attendants, I'd like to speak with Miss Tenero. Wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendant's room? Before I do, you still have to clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Randy Justice for All was my first game, please. I've dealt with you more than anyone. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious collusion. The scene of the crime was here, in the very lounge the body was discovered. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found. The only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This unmistakably makes you the likeliest suspect. Fighting your sister again. Every day. Hmm, the likely suspect, Francisca. Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like you to use such a vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Where's my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? 
Thank you, but your leniency is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic. Fast. Let's see here. I'm probably gonna have to press. Well, the most obvious conclusion, see the crime is here in the very lounge, the body was discovered. Actually, maybe I don't have to. Gotta save just in case. Megalovania is kind of my go-to I'm bored I'm bored music to sing to myself. It's been saying my blood. There we go. It was on elevators, so it could have happened on any floor. I mean, we have the suitcase. We just know it didn't happen in the lounge specifically. It would appear you did not have all the information you needed after all. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves that the body was moved from a different location. Okay, listen. I know that the second investigation's corner theme, pursuit theme, is um, better, and I agree. This fits Edgeworth way, 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 way more. This one is still made. Oh, it is, and I think it fits Edgeworth way better than the second one. The second one's good. It's very good. By itself, it's a better track. But this is an Edgeworth pursuit theme. In some ways, I prefer this one. The killer used this suitcase to move the victim's body, meaning that the real scene of the crime is not this lounge at all. Now, who's the one rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you to come to that conclusion. It would seem I can't escape that easily. You should know better than that. Havan Karma is perfect in every way. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? As if there's proof of that. Where is the proof that this suitcase was moved around? Do I have to present it again? All right, th there's stains there. That. that spilled grape juice in quotations in front of the elevator. Yes, and I'd like you to draw your attention to this area here. Where is the evidence that proves the killer dragged the suitcase through here? Take that. The mark here. Wouldn't you say it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there is also grape juice residue on the wheels of the suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad you've come to your senses. Not so fast! This still doesn't put you in the clear, not by a long shot. You hear this one on outdated autopsy report memes? I know. I love those memes. I love those memes so much. I can't find a specific one, though. It, it, like, they're, the one that I always find on YouTube search now, because YouTube search sucks ass now, is, um... It, it go, it's too slow with how the person talks. And, like... Like, they use a deeper Edgeworth voice. Like, like the, that's the main thing. The one I find these days has a higher pitch Edgeworth voice. I want, there's one that had a lower pitch, and that's the one I like more. You prepared yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit that turbulence. And you waited for the victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Then, while you went to the elevator with the victim's body stuffed into the suitcase... The plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. 
With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from, and pretended to be the discoverer of the body. One I like only as text. Not a bad bit of logic, something you thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? That I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. Expose the flaws in your logic in one fell swoop. Okay, there's someone to acquire the P bank before the plane hit that turbulence. Let me press on it first. And how do you suppose I was able to take a piggy bank out of the display case? As I recall, the case was locked. That's easy. If the case was locked, you simply had to hit the glass. Like this. No, not Gamju. You've shattered my heart of glass. So she wants to talk about the in-flight shop and the Mr. I fly bank, does she? That takes care of how you obtain the murder weapon. You wait for the victim, yada yada, doesn't matter. You fucked up right from the start. The fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. Your legal prowess is certainly something to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essential tools to those who stand in the courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. Ifly Piggy Bank is such a fake, it is not. It's just such a fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? Timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is important. It was taken after the turbulence had occurred. Well then what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder when the killer fabricated this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After exiting the elevator, the killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to pick the bank up from the floor and took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. I leave the victim's wallet was planted on my personage in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that I would be framed for the murder of Mr. Ackby Hicks. You there! Yes, ma'am. Other than this piggy bank, was anything else resembling a murder weapon found? We didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could have been used were broken by the turbulence. And the remaining items all tested negative for any trace of blood. I see. Well, Miles, it appears that your stall tactics are in an end. But it's possible that's just hidden somewhere, sir. Eek! <laughs> if the criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place, I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same place as the bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside that suitcase, it signals to me that the killer had not prepared a more secure place to hide the evidence. Which means that the real murder weapon is either still on the murder's patronage or is still at the real crime scene. There is one more possibility, and that would be that the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just. Let me finish! The killer took the bank out from the display case before the turbulence by opening the lock on the display case door. It was at that time that the glass pane in the door was broken. I'd say that's a perfectly reasonable line of line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see, so that means that the killer had the key to the display case. Francisca, the person you're talking about. Not so fast. I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain and granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is a sin of lying. Speaking of which, I recall that you also wish to speak with her. Yes. Very well. Permission granted, but only if I can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? I have no intention of interrogating her, but you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. Miss Tinero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. And away we go! For more shitty voice acting! Is 
so you're the one that poked around inside this plane without the captain's permission. Deviating from the flight attendant's manual is very unbecoming, you know. What were you hoping to accomplish by doing that? I... I... Mr. Nero. Ah, Mr. Edgeworth, you're here too? You please help us shed some light on why you did what you did. All right. All right, let's chat her up. Let's chat up the cube hair wife. Why did you lie about receiving the captain's permission like that? Because I didn't think I would be able to get his permission. What do you mean? The captain, he only has ears for Cammy. I spoke with the captain a little earlier myself. He definitely seems to be rather taken with Miss Meal. Yes, and on top of that, I had mistakenly accused Mr. Edgeworth of being the killer. I wanted to make amends. In that case, please allow me to thank you for what you did. Thanks to you, I was able to clear myself of all charges. Really? You're able to prove your innocence? Oh, thank goodness. Mr. Nero, is it? There is one more thing I'd like to ask you. You were in the in-flight shop just before the turbulence, weren't you? Please answer honestly. Yes, I was. And why were you there? Well, I... Hmm? Why the sudden hesitation? Francisca seems to have struck a nerve. All I did was go check up on the shop like I always do. You're saying it was for work then? Yes, I'm in charge of the shop, so I have to keep an eye on it. I don't have any reason to go there otherwise. After your visit to the shop, you paid a visit to this room, correct? Yes, I came back to freshen up and adjust my makeup. I'm sorry, but there isn't much else to tell. Hmm. Mr. Nero claims to have no reason other than duty to go to the shop. Is that all there is to it? Maybe I should ask her about that thing. Ugh. What thing? <laughs> what thing am I pulling up right now? Uh, the, the, the bank? The piggy bank? I'm sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah. Fuck. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to click that. There you are. I don't know how to answer you. That's a professional flight attendant. I'm a failure. She must be worn out from the long questioning section she just went through. Alright, let's talk about the f suitcase now. You could please take a look at this for me, Miss Tiniro. Oh, that suitcase! Yes, about this suitcase. You are the one who designed it, correct? And I think I figured something else out about it. The suitcase is the reason you went to the shop, isn't it? There's nothing you won't find out eventually, is there? Would you please tell me more about this suitcase? Yes, um, I... well, I... I was interested in seeing how the suitcases I had designed were selling. I... I know that as a service professional I'm not supposed to care, but I really wanted to know. And I was glad to see it was the last one there. The last one there? So you're saying, Mr. Senior, that the suitcase in question was the last one? Yes, they're just so popular, they're practically flying off the shelves. That's not exactly the impression I got. The one in the shop is most definitely the last one. Well, we're currently looking at that suitcase. Really? Then I guess we sold all of them. Thank you very much for taking the last one. I didn't say anything about buying it. Then say you'll buy it. I, I'm sorry, I, I can't. But, but why? I think it'd go great with your complexion, Mr. Edgeworth. It really suits you. I guarantee it personally as a service professional. Um, well, that is, how should I put this? It's hideous. What? Hmm, maybe that was a bit too direct. Moving on, my issue with the suitcase isn't the design, it's the number of them remaining. R remaining? There were two suitcases in the in-flight shop when I investigated it. Two? But that's... Iconic! <laughs> I'm sure there was only one. <laughs> Looks like her story has generated quite the contradiction. There he is. <laughs> if I ever need to call Circuit, just make a two joke. He'll be there. <laughs> When I left the shop, I'm positive there was only one suitcase left. Something is amiss here. What could be the meaning of this inconsistency? Hmm? By the way, Mr. Nero. 
What is one of those suitcases doing here? Um, that's... I thought you said there was only one left? That one is, um... It's mine. I've used it for a very long time now. She's used it for a long time. I think not. Mr. Nero, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't lie to me. Excuse me? I don't believe for even one second that you've used this for a very long time. What proves that this hasn't been used for nearly as long as Miss Tanira says? Price tag! Take that. She ain't bought shit! Miss Tanira, is it also your habit to keep the price tag pristine on your suitcase? Uh, what is the meaning of this? Why would you lie about a suitcase? Despite having faith in her design sense, the sales numbers made her cry bitter tears. The truth was becoming increasingly clear to me. Mr. Nero, I think I understand. I know what you are trying to hide. Now then, this suitcase was originally in... The shop. Seeing as how the price tag is still on this suitcase, one can only assume it was out on fl the floor for sale in the shop. And the person who brought the bought the suitcase was... It wouldn't be her. I, I'm gonna, I think it's Acme Hicks. No. Nope. And then I'll admit I was wrong. <laughs> Let's try that again. I mean, we've established that she hasn't used it a very long time, so I don't think it's hers. Given how much Cammy was insulting, and I don't think it's hers either. And I highly doubt he has anything to do with it. Take that. It was you, wasn't it, Miss Tinero? I hate to say this, but the suitcase that you designed... It hasn't sold very well, has it? You saw how poorly this design that you poured your heart into was selling, and were deeply hurt. That's why you wanted to make it look like it was selling by buying it yourself. Isn't that right? And the reason you went to the shop and came back here was... I'm sorry! All I really have is my job. I, I was overjoyed when my design was chosen. I thought that maybe, maybe I had finally accomplished something. The suitcase didn't sell. It's because of the design, isn't it? All because it's, as you put it, hideous. I can't say they chose a great place in which to sell them either. We weren't selling a single one and they were just sitting there collecting dust. I felt so bad seeing them there day in and day out. So I decided to buy one for every flight I worked. You buy one every single time you work a flight? I see, so in order to keep your resolution, you went and bought one today as well. Yes, and here's my receipt for that purchase. Hmm, this receipt is clearly timestamped 5.40 a.m. That's a l bro, how much does her job pay her? Those were $1,200 a pop. Unless she gets a massive employee discount. But like, goddamn. Jesus Christ. Maybe I should be a flight attendant. Shit, I'm in the wrong line of work. <sighs> They're planning to scrap the remaining ones at the end of this flight. Miss Tanira, where are these other suitcases? 
It should all be down in the cargo hold. And the suitcase the killer used could very well have come from the cargo hold. Um, Mr. Hedgeworth, you don't think that the killer used one of my suitcases, do? Yes, I do. The killer used one of your beloved suitcases to move the victim's body. How could they? These suitcases were meant to be faithful partners to our passengers on their trips. That's all I ever wished for them to be. Mr. Nero, is there any other way to get to the cargo hold other than the elevator? The only other way is just through that door there. And what about security? The door has no special lock installed because just to enter this room, you have a special key card that only crew members have access to, which means that the culprit is someone who can enter this room. Limiting the passengers and leaving only crew members as potential suspects. I, I can't believe it. Yes, Franziska? I don't like that Franziska's, um, doesn't have her voice clips in the game. Ace Attorney is usually very consistent about if they have a voice clip for something, they will use it. So the fact they're not using Franziska's is... M makes me a little sad, not gonna lie. Apparently, the average salary for flight attendants in the USA is 27 an hour. That's a lot of extra money. <laughs> Maybe she can't afford it. But no, every flight, every flight she is buying one. Even with 27 in it, like... Let's be very generous. Let's be very generous and assume... By one flight, she means one trip. So we'll assume she works... Uh, what, what, what's like the longest flight someone could reasonably take? Like 12 hours? 12 hours? We'll assume 12 hours. Has to be one trip because they had a small stop, yeah. And she didn't buy two, yeah. So she buys one per trip. And assuming she works like... 12 hours, like that's probably at most like 300 bucks for one shift, for one shift that she works. And that's like highballing it too. Cause a 12 hour trip is, a 12 hour flight is pretty long. So like, Still quite a bit of money to spend every flight. Exactly. Even with a wage that big. That just does not add up. She must have a massive employee discount. Or a lot of savings. One or the other. And what do you mean by that? The suitcase came from the cargo hold. That fact alone tells the whole story. Yes, which is why I said the culprit must be a crew member who used their key card. Miles Edgeworth. You're proposing that the killer rode the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, that's the only realistic possibility. That other attendant, Miss Meal, I asked her earlier and she had this to say. Siska got information out of Miss Meal. In order to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold, a different key card is required. A different one? Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Rhoda Tiniro, and only you. <laughs> What? Is this true, Miss Tenero? Yes, I keep that key card in my locker at all times. Could you please show us that card right now? Yes, hold on. Ah, I, I don't believe it. What's wrong? The key card, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Very clever. Pretending that your card was stolen when in fact you're just trying to hide it from us. You really thought this through. Wait, wait, it's not like that. You can tell us all about what it's like down at the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Edgeworth. What's wrong? There's disbelief written all over your face. Franziska, I know that you are the lead investigator on this case. However... Hold it. Don't even think about wasting any more of my time. You know the rules as well as I do. Evidence speaks louder than words. Even if this isn't a courtroom, that basic tenant still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. 
What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. Be continued. Okie dokie. I think that's a good place to end off stream for today. We're coming up on the three hour mark. I don't really want to go all too much longer than that. I am getting a spam call. Let me um send them into the ninth layer of hell real quick. Give me a sec. In my ninth layer of hell, I mean I'm adding them to my blacklist on my things to block. There we go. Perfect. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and move back on over here. And let's get some music going. Because it is eerily silent. And let's find ourselves somebody to raid, shall we? Mm. Who is on? Who is on that is actually raidable? Uh, man, am I glad my phone blocks most spam calls by itself. Mine doesn't. Probably because I'm too poor for one that does. Okay. Hmm. Ain't many people on at the moment. I suppose we'll just go raid your other boss. Circuit. We're just gonna go we're just gonna go raid your 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 other boss. We're gonna raid Lunar. Do I know shit about payday? No, I do not. <laughs> but it never hurts. <laughs> oh yeah, he's playing a game I'm very good at. <sighs> and you should have no qualms with going over there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, hope y'all had a good time today. As for what we're doing tomorrow, I'm going to be working on uh, CC's Calm tomorrow. It'll be an art stream, same as always. It'll just be me, all by my lonesome. So... This is going to be a really chill stream. <laughs> Especially on account of that. On account of me being sick. But um, outside of that, as for next week, um, I know Viz said she wanted to try and organize something for next week. So I'm probably going to need to talk to her about that soon. I just noticed there is a loading thingy right here. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Thank you for stream clap. Thank you. Thank you for being here, Circuit. Thank you for being here, CC. I always appreciate y'all too coming by to support me and tell me when I accidentally mute my mic. Seriously, thank you. I would not have caught that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, not much more else to say right now. Hope y'all have a good day, night, afternoon, wherever y'all are, and whatever the fuck y'all are doing. And y'all have a good one.